He's a competitive alpha male billionaire. Hello, friends. In this episode, we're going deep into the universe of hedge funds by getting to know better a certain... Bobby Axelrod is no ordinary billionaire. He's an icon. Through Axelrod, we're going to learn about hedge fund managers in the real world and investigate what type of hedge fund would Axe Capital be if it was live today. So let's start with Axe's personality. He remembers every detail. Electric Sun is controlled by Kazowitz. He also owns 19.3% of Lumatherm back. And can process the information like a machine. He's very smart. Wow. Like most hedge fund manager, he has launched his own shop. The moment I let someone in a boardroom or a government office tell me what I can or cannot buy, I may as well close the shop, and I'm not closing the shop. He's an icon of the wealth of our age, and he is a fraud. I'd say he's not a fraud. He's quite realistic as a hedge fund manager. In fact, he's rumored to be inspired by Steve Cohen, the founder of the hedge fund Point72 and owner of the New York Mets. In case you wonder, it's not about the looks. It's probably that Steve was charged for insider trading and Axe is not trading above board. They're meteors. The only win they can live with is total. How would Axe Capital compare to the big hedge funds of today? I googled it and the assets under management are at $10 billion. That would rank as number 38 in 2020. Our investors pay us a 3% management fee and 30% of their profits? And you want me to tell them we're buying some fucking Apple? The fees are realistic, but they're unusual. The norm used to be 2 and 20, and there's clear trend towards lowering fees. But I'm up 32% this year, which from what I know of your run and hide approach is 30 points better than what you are, Vista Verde. Despite this strong performance in the hierarchy of hedge fund, He's not at the same level as Kenneth here. See someone like Kenneth, dry acid he is, is solid, part of the firmament. Whose performance is much lower, and that tells us a very important point. But I'll leave it for later. Now what about the strategies? He's got a finger in almost every pie, he'll invest in anything. Longs, shorts, sells, It sounds like covers, Axe Capital is open to any volume. ideas. In real life, hedge funds don't have a purely opportunistic approach. In terms of asset classes, Axe Capital mainly trades equities, but not only. And in practice, portfolio managers would focus on specific strategies. For example, Steve Cohen uses three strategies, long, short, macro, and systematic. So let's try to find out which ones are used at Axe Capital. You knew they were gonna whiff their numbers. Why didn't you bang the short hard? He often goes short, but also owns stocks, so he's probably in equity long short. Here they're talking about capturing the premium from a takeover target, and that would be merger arbitrage. There's an episode where they hedge the position in Brazil, and it's probably global macro, and Ben talks about what have we learned about Bobby Axelrod, the hedge fund manager. He's an over-the-top character, but credible. His fund uses four strategies, they're having a good year, the assets will soar to 13 billion based on performance, and the fund will connect 30 million in management fees, 96 million dollars in performance fees. Nice. But he's not in the firmament. He's not a top, top hedge fund. And we haven't explained why. You can call it what you want, but I call it careful, risk averse. We're going to dive deeper into that in the next episode where we'll review concepts such as alpha, beta, and correlation. I, I hedge my investments. I protect the downside. So please subscribe. And also, I'm launching a course about alternative investments. It's free if you sign up early, so check the link. Thank you for watching.